Our journey in this video will start at Polaris in Ursa Minor, or as it is also called, Little Bear. And we turn to the left hand side until we cross Cassiopeia, which is a star constellation all year long visible in the northern hemisphere. And then we turn further to the left hand side until we end up in the star constellation of Orion. Orion is one of the best visible star constellations on a night sky in the northern hemisphere. And there are certain objects which are easily recognizable. First of all, we have the Orion Belt with Mintaka, Anilam and Anitak. And we have the Orion Third, which is what we will focus on in this video. In my photography, I also love taking pictures of the night sky and the Milky Way. So this is a picture taken actually in Bavaria. Here is another one taken on Corsica Island, which is France in the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, I'm happy to spend hours and hours in the mountains or on location to get these shots done and then later work on them in post-processing. So this is Greece, for example, in the mountains. And sometimes you have to find just the right place where a night sky shooting can take place. Like here close to this observatory. We will shoot in this video with the Leica SL2. One lens will be the Aposomicron 50mm, the other one will be the Apo Vario Elmerit, 90 to 280mm, shot at 280mm, and we'll see what we find in the night sky. So my little shooting took place one night before new moon, so a very dark night, but very clear night sky. I'm walking out into my backyard here and uh, crossing through the backyard towards my tripod, where I mounted my Leica SL2 on an astro tracker called Polaris. And uh, you see here that white device you see here is the Polaris astro tracker. It's mounted on a Polari tripod, which is made or tailor-made for astrophotography. And that little astro tracker is where the camera is mounted on. So it's between the tripod and the camera and it's basically matching earth rotation to make sure you can take longer exposures or you can take several shots, which you can later stack in post-processing to get a more noise-free, better and more clear image. In my first shooting round, I was working with the 50 millimeter focal length. So let's look at the result at 50 millimeters first. And uh, first of all, it looks quite nice. I show metadata in a moment. Let's identify the objects we saw before in the iOS app. So here's Orion Belt and Orion Third. And uh, I think uh, looking at the metadata, it's a good result. This was at an ISO of 25,000, wide open aperture of f2 and only one second of shutter speed or exposure time. Noise reduction on in camera and also later in Lightroom. But in general, a quite clear, crisp, nice star constellation picture of Orion, what we see here. Staying with 50 millimeters, but going to an ISO value of 100, still wide open aperture of f2, noise reduction on, and a 300 second exposure with the Polaris Astro Tracker, we get that picture you see on display here now. And that looks pretty good. You see the Astro Tracker is doing a good job. Typically at 25 seconds, you see the stars as little dashes. Here it looks pinpoint sharp, but when we zoom in, we see that there is some line dashing going on with the stars. So my calibration was obviously not perfect. What you also see when comparing the ISO 100 and the 25,000 ISO images is that noise reduction did eat stars away. Given the large resolution of the Leica SL2 and the clear image with ISO 100, what we find here in that 50 millimeter focal length image here is already that nebula we are interested in. And we are going to improve this now with a much higher focal length, but again with the Leica SL2. So let's go back into the backyard and exchange lenses. I have now mounted the SL2 on the Polaris Star Tracker with the 90 to 280 millimeter zoom lens here at 280 millimeters. And let's try our luck again with that nebula we are interested in. So here's the result from that shooting. And if you look at the metadata, we are at an ISO of 400. We are at the focal length of 280 millimeters and we have an exposure time of 24 seconds. And uh, in this way, if we zoom in, we get that nebula in much more clear and clean and crisp form on the image. But we can further improve this by taking now several frames with these shooting parameters and stacking them 
in software later on. And of course it needs the Polaris Star Tracker to match Earth rotation in that process so that we can later align the images and stack them into an even more noise-free, clear and crisp image. Here you see 17 frames shot with the same parameters. Taking place, you see this in the red rectangle here, between 22 p.m. and 9 minutes and 22 p.m. and 25 minutes. 24 seconds of exposure is roughly half a minute, then roughly half a minute on in-camera noise reduction and that basically makes one frame per minute. Shooting for 17 minutes gave me those frames. So here's the result. Let's briefly look at the data here. So first of all, the lens is the one I mentioned before. The image consists of 17 frames stacked with software. I come to that in a moment. Shutter speed, as we said, 24 seconds per frame, aperture f4, ISO of 400, noise reduction on in camera. And the image which was produced is actually a TIFF file with around 140 megabytes of file size. Zooming into the picture, this clearly gives us the image we are looking for. But clearly we are not done yet and I'm going to show a little bit of what I did in post-processing in Lightroom to make this image more pop, to let it look a little more like these typical astrophotography photos we find in the web from much more powerful telescopes. And uh, I'm going to explain this, also look at the metadata quickly again. And I think the ideal way to take these kind of nebula pictures on the night sky is if you go for an astro modified camera, like for instance, the new Canon EOS RA, which is in particular made with certain uh, adjustments to the camera sensor to be suitable for astrophotography and capturing that part of light, which is typically filtered out by a normal camera sensor. So here's my final image and looking quickly at the metadata to confirm what we are talking about. Camera model is specified here, lens model is specified here. Resolution of course is much less because I have cropped in 140.2 megabytes of file size for the TIFF file, ISO 400, 280 millimeters focal length for the shooting, aperture of f4.0 and 24 seconds of exposure time. The program I used for stacking these 17 frames is called Stary Landscape Stacker. It's available in the App Store for macOS and can be downloaded there. And I think it did a pretty good job. So I'm not sure if I wanna recommend software here. You can also do this in uh, other software, of course, in the usual photo editing or post-processing software. But that app here came in nice and handy and did a good job. So let's quickly go through my adjustments in Lightroom Creative Cloud here. And first of all, focusing on the upper part of the adjustments here, I increased exposure to plus two, contrast to plus 50, and I took down the highlights by to minus 30. The blacks I increased significantly to plus 90 because that made the image look in the way I wanted it to look. Going to the lower part of adjustments, you see I pushed the temperature to a more warm scale. I also increased what Lightroom calls the tint and I increased saturation significantly as well as clarity and dehaze because that made the image pop in the way I wanted it to pop. So all in, I'm happy with my result. The Leica SL2 mounted on that Polaris Star Tracker at 280 millimeters was providing sufficient zoom into the night sky to give me that nebula picture I was interested in. And since Orion is one of the best visible star constellations on a night sky, and by the way, also since Orion is known for thousands of years, so in Egypt, for instance, the pharaohs and the high priests, they observed the night sky and Orion meant something to them. I think all in there are good reasons why Orion and the nebulas in that star constellation are an attractive object for photography. So if you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and peace out.